Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kim, it's Ghost. It's Monday, so it's a Blu-ray hunting day. Now I know HMV isn't open, and a lot of my films have arrived in the post, so I will show you them when I get home. But we're going to head up to Poundland. I've done two quarantines back to back because I had the virus, and just as it was coming to an end, my wife had the virus, so we had to quarantine for over 20 days. So it's the first time going out. So I'm going to have a look on my daily exercise in Poundland, and then I'll take you home and show you what I got but hopefully find a coffee on the way. Got this mask on, got my channel name there, nice gift for my daughter. So anyway, let's head up to Poundland and see exactly what they have. See you in a bit. Well, here we go into Poundland. It's quite early in the morning, so not many people around. They do have quite the selection in here, but uh, nothing new, I'm afraid. Just some regular old titles. I will leave you to read the titles for yourselves. It's been a while since I've been in Poundland, but I cannot believe my eyes. They are now selling vibrators in Poundland. Well, maybe that's where you get the name Poundland from. All shapes and sizes by a company called Nookie. And believe it or not, this is just yards away from children's toys. <laughs> Well, you can see where I'm pointing. That is where the vibrators are located. And just 10 feet away is the children's toy section. Not the best place to put it, I don't think. Um, I don't know, maybe they should have a curtain delf area for adult toys. And they have a section here of pops as well. So I will leave you to see these. I think these are all three pound each. <laughs> Well, that's enough time looking at movies, vibrators and pops. So it's time to get a nice Costa coffee. McDonald's was only open for home deliveries and dry foods, of which I had neither access to. Hey everybody, welcome back. These are the pickups for this week's so right. Further chit chat, let's show you exactly what came in the post. The first title is Eureka's release of The African Queen, a film made in 1957, joint British and American adventure, directed by John Huston and starring Humphrey Bogart and Catherine Hepburn, along with Robert Morley. Now it tells the story of Rose Sayer and Charlie Allner. The film opens with Rose and her brother Samuel, Robert Morley, brother and sister missionaries, who are bringing the church's teachings to an African village on the outbreak of World War One? Charlie, a mechanic played by Bogart, docks his boat, the African Queen, at the village and meets the two missionaries. He tells them of the new world war and that they should leave. He then moves on down the river. Soon after, the Germans arrive. They burn down all the huts and the church, which makes Samuel ill to the point where he dies during the night. Now, Charlie returns the next day to help Rose bury her brother and take her to the open water past the Germans who are now defending and claiming the land as their own. So it's a road movie of sorts just on the water where you see a lot of character development and the African Queen was actually filmed on location in Africa which was very surprising. I love this film, let's take a look inside. Well inside you get artwork on the disc, alternate artwork and a 23 page booklet on the making of the film with an interview by the director and you've got a nice picture there of Charlie having the leeches applied. It's a great scene in the film where he's actually pulling the boat along. Very good film indeed. So that is the African Queen. It's spine numbered 218 if you're interested. The next one is the Arrow release and it's the found footage film Wreck, Spanish movie from 2007 with a runtime of just 78 minutes. Follows a reporter called Angela who's covering the night shift with a cameraman called Pablo when they attend an apartment block as they're filming a fire crew who's there to rescue an old woman. And the first two firemen, Alex and Manu, meet two waiting police officers who approach an old woman who quickly becomes aggressive. 
Now, unbeknownst to the attending crews, the military have sealed all the exits. Now, this film received quite a few accolades and went on to have three sequels that ended in 2014. Let's open this one up and see what you get inside. Where well, you get different artwork on the slip as you do to the cover, but inside there is alternate artwork. You get artwork on the disc, alternate artwork on the cover, which I believe is the original poster art. And coincidentally, you get a 23 page booklet. And I'm guessing this is all about how they made the movie as well. And you get an art card inside, which I can only assume is a forthcoming title, Children of the Corn by Stephen King. So that is Arrow's release of Rep. The next one is from Eureka as well, and it's another Buster Keaton set with three six-reader films. The first one being Navigator, which was made in 1924, the same year MGM was formed. Now, Buster plays a rich man called Rolo, who wants to marry a rich girl called Betsy, but she refuses. So he boards the ship that was going to take him on their honeymoon without her anyway. But there's this mix-up at the pier, and he gets on the wrong ship. Now, the ship that he does get on actually belongs to Betsy's dad who has just sold it to a country that is at war. And that is where I'll leave it there, not to give you the whole story away. It has a runtime of just 59 minutes. Now the next film in the set is Seven Chances, made just a year later in 1925, with a runtime of 56 minutes. It stars Buster Keaton as Jimmy Shannon, T. Roy Barnes as Billy Meakin, British actor I might add, and Snitz Edwards as the lawyer and Ruth Dwyer as Ruth. Now it tells the story of a man who will inherit seven million dollars if he's married by 7 p.m. on his 27th birthday, which happens to be the same day. It was a box office hit and was retold by the Three Stooges twice, once in Brightless Groom and again in Husbands Beware. And the last film in this set is called Battling Butler, made in 1926 with a longer runtime of 71 minutes and it's based on a musical from 1923. Now it stars Buster Keaton as Alfred Butler, Sally O'Neill as the Mountain Girl, Walter James as her father, Bud Fine as her brother, and Francis McDonald as Alfred Battenin Butler. Now the story is this, Alfred, played by Buster, is in love with a Mountain Girl and he pretends that he is the real Alfred Battenin Butler, a fighter with the same name. This also stars Snitz Edwards who appeared in Seven Chances and another Keaton film called college in 1927. Let's take a look inside. So inside you do get three discs so each film is on a separate disc. There's inner artwork with Buster laying on a tiger skin and oddly enough another 23 page booklet with notes from all the three six reelers. So that is the Buster Keaton set from Eureka with the spine numbers 221 to 223. Lastly, I picked up this Doctor Who season, season 14. It stars Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor. Also stars Elizabeth Sladen as Sarah Jane Smith. Louise Jameson as Leela. Now the series ran on British television from the 4th of September 1976 through to the 2nd of April 1977. There were six stories told over 26 episodes and it actually took a five week break during transmission as the writer Robert Holmes was still working on the final story of this season, The Talons of Wang Cheng, I believe it was called, which sees the Doctor and Leela travel to Victoria, England, surprise there, and encounter a sinister Chinese stage magician and his master. Let's take a look inside. So you have this thing that's crossed between like a quarter of a box and a J card. You remove that, you have the same artwork underneath. And inside you have this tray of discs. You get the point with that. It's odd really, you think they'd open the other way because it's quite awkward to get your fingers in there. And you also have this, and when you open it up, I'm assuming that's the inside of the TARDIS, and in there you get a book. Now the book is 35 pages and it tells you all about the episodes inside and bonus discs as well. Now, even though this was televised back in the 70s, never watched a single episode, I've only really been into the Doctor Who franchise since like halfway through Matt Smith to present day. Um, these are very expensive to buy now. These are all out of print. I think I paid 80 quid for this one, and that's just one season, and there's quite a few more to get. I do plan to get one, maybe one a week. 
hopefully to catch up with uh, getting all the pres all the past ones that have been released already. I've pre-ordered two, which are coming out hopefully soon. I think one comes out in March, and another one's not got the date yet, but pre-ordered it, so uh, I won't have to pay scalpers' prices. So that is Doctor Who season 14. And our last pickup is this Doctor Who Christmas special set. Now, I'm, I've heard since that that some of these actually appear on seasoned releases, but um, I don't mind. I've got the Christmas ones all together, which is good because sometimes you just want a little festive show. So I'll open this one up and see what you get inside. So you have the slip box there, which I will put to one side. So you get 10 Christmas episodes on three discs. The first disc has David Tennant on it. I've not explored any of his seasons yet. You have Matt Smith, who I told you I came in halfway through his reign as a doctor, and Peter Grapaldi as well, who I quite liked as the doctor. So that's the discs. You get a pamphlet saying there's going to be a Doctor Who festival in 2015, so I guess I've missed that. And you get a gatefold pamphlet that tells you all about the episodes. And a nice little touch, you get a pack of Christmas cards being a Christmas episode. That is very nice indeed. So that is the BBC 10 Christmas episodes of the Doctor Who. I think this cost me £20 and about 50p, so I'm guessing this one isn't out of print just yet. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Are you a fan of Doctor Who? Are you not? Leave a comment down below along with anything else you want to discuss. I will get back to you. I promise. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. It's all free. Why wouldn't you? And on that note, thank you so much for choosing my channel and watching my video today. Take care and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.